Uh, finally in chapter 10 of Romans. So Romans chapter 10 verses 5 through 11. For Moses writes about the righteous sorry, for Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Uh, much of this was a quote from Deuteronomy chapter 30. Let me go back there, read the context. Uh, let's see, I'm going to read verses Deuteronomy 30 verses 10 to 14. If you obey the voice of Yahweh your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if you turn to Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul, for this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend unto heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. Paul, the context of this is about God's commandments, you know, obeying all of them. And God is saying it's not complicated. It's not hard. God promised that his commandments are not too hard for us. So anyone who tells you it is impossible to keep God's commandments is ignoring what scripture itself says. Now, of course, it's impossible to keep them perfectly your whole life. We know that everybody sins eventually, everybody except Yeshua. So it's impossible to keep it perfectly, but God never expected us to. If God had expected us to keep it perfectly, he never would have included provisions for what do you do if you screw up, but he did. So the expectation for mistakes is built into the commandments. But the point of this is that if you are submitted to God, if you are being faithful to him, then God expects you to obey his commandments. Like Yeshua said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love God, keep his commandments. John wrote that we know that we love one another as Yeshua commanded, as the Torah commands, if we love God and keep his commandments. Because keeping the commandments is all about loving one another and loving God. The commandments are instructions on how to love one another. So Yeshua said, the two greatest commandments are to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Those were quotes directly from scripture, from Leviticus. And that's what God is saying is not too difficult. It's not too difficult to love him. It's not too difficult to love your neighbor. But Paul, in this passage in Romans, is connecting this with Yeshua. He's saying, who will go up to heaven, that is Christ, and bring him down to us? Um, but Moses was talking about the law. So, in a sense, Paul is connecting Yeshua with the law, the Torah, the law of Moses. And this really gets to the point of what it means to confess that Yeshua is your Lord. If he is your Lord, you will obey him. If you don't obey him, obviously you don't believe he's your Lord, because Lord means master, and you obey your master. So how can you call him master if you're not going to obey him? Now, some people will say that, well, his commandments are different than Moses. There's this law of Moses and there's the law of Christ. And that comes from Galatians 6.2. And uh, there's another passage. I don't remember what it is right offhand. But is it really, is that reasonable to say that the law of Christ is different from the law of Moses? You know, I call this idea, I'm, I'm sure somebody else has used this term before, but I call it metanomianism. You know, antinomianism says we don't have to keep God's law anymore. Metanomianism says that the law of God or the law of Christ is different from the law of Moses, that God gave the Israelites certain commandments just to make them different or um, because they needed rules. 
I'm giving you rules to follow because you need rules to follow. Not because they were inherent to God's character or they were really part of God's real law. They were just this extra thing that the Jews have to do. So then when the scripture talks about the law of God, it doesn't mean the law of Moses. And when it talks about the law of Christ, it's talking about the law of God, not the law of Moses. So a different law, metanomianism. But that is totally unscriptural. Throughout the Old Testament, the commands of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, especially the book of Deuteronomy, which Paul is quoting from here, is referred to as the law of God, the law of Yahweh. So it's completely unscriptural to say that the law of God is different from the law of Moses. But what about the law of Christ? Could that be different from the law of God? Well, the apostles didn't seem to think so. Almost everything they taught was taken straight out of Torah. Uh, you know, they taught a lot out of the, uh, the Psalms and uh, even the Proverbs and the, the prophets. But every instruction they gave people was based in Torah. You know, Paul made a couple of exceptions where he says, you know, it's not, it's not the Lord telling you this, but I'm telling you. But even those can be connected back to Torah. They're not something that Paul just made up. They really are based in Torah, even if they weren't explicit in the law of Moses. Uh, Paul even said, long after he was saved, long after he had completed most of his missionary journeys, that even then, he would not even know what sin is if the law didn't tell him what sin is. And the law in that context is the law of Moses. So Paul, as a believer, as an apostle, was still keeping the law because he himself said we shouldn't go on sinning. Well, the law tells you what sin is. Therefore, if you don't want to sin, you need to keep the law. Um, and it's not just the apostles. Yeshua, too, taught from the Torah. He taught from the law of Moses. He spent his entire ministry explaining the law of Moses. And if he was going to do away with that at the end of his ministry, why would he spend years teaching you how to do something that he was about to throw out? That doesn't make any sense. In Hebrew, the word for law is Torah. So when Paul says, well, and the word Torah literally means instruction. So technically, any instruction of God is the law or the Torah of God. But more formally, the first five books are called Torah. But when Paul says, refers to something called the law of Christ, in his Hebrew Jewish mind, he's thinking the Torah of Christ or the instruction of Christ. Well, what did Christ instruct? Everything he taught was straight out of Torah. Let me read you one of the most famous passages, and I know you already know what I'm going to go to here. Matthew 5, verses 17 through 20. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Let's keep one thing straight. The Pharisees were not keeping the law of Moses. They were keeping a lot of it, and they believed that they were keeping it all, but they were keeping their own rules. They had added things to the law, which the law says you're not allowed to do. They had even added rules that prevented people from keeping the law. So Yeshua himself said that if you do and teach the law, you will be called great in the kingdom of heaven, which means you're in the kingdom of heaven if you are doing and teaching the law. But if you follow the steps of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you won't even be in the kingdom. They were not teaching the commandments of God. They were not teaching the laws of Moses. They were teaching the laws of men. Don't smoke, don't drink, don't dance. These are the laws of men. And if you think these things are making you righteous, they're not making you righteous, they're not making you holy. They're just making you special, which isn't necessarily a good thing. So, back to Romans, um, in verse, uh, what is that, verse 8, uh, Paul references something called the word of faith, which we preach. The 
word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. He's already connected Christ to the law. And now the word that he preaches is the law. Not keep the law in order to be saved, because your salvation is more about asking forgiveness for your sins, submitting yourself to Messiah and calling him Lord. But once you do that, now, if you're going to call him Lord, Master, then now you need to keep his commandments. And the passage that he just quoted says it's not too difficult. And in fact, by connecting these pa that passage to Christ, Paul is pointing out that Christ showed us how to do it. He showed us how to keep the commandments. And it's not burdensome. He said, take my yoke upon, me, upon you, and my yoke is easy. It's not burdensome. Which is exactly what Moses was saying in Deuteronomy 30. The law isn't hard. It, it's a struggle with our flesh that wants to do the wrong thing all the time. But it's not complicated. It's really not that hard when you train yourself to do it. The word of faith, essentially, that Paul is talking about here is, yes, your law, God, is just. I hear it, I submit to you, and I obey your instructions, your law, your Torah. Who is, who is Lord? Well, Christ is Lord. What is his instruction? Keep the commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Righteousness for salvation, <clears throat> That the thing that removes your sins and gives you eternal life only comes from submission to Yeshua by saying, Lord, I am a sinner. I know I can't save myself. There's nothing I can do to make up for all the sins I've committed in the past. Forgive me. I will obey you in the future. And only then does that future obedience, the righteousness of Moses that Paul talks about here that brings life, have eternal value. It might enhance your life if you do it without faith. You know, you'll, if you obey the law of Moses, you'll have better relationships with your neighbors, with your family. Um, it will make your life better, but it's not going to get you eternal life. That comes from submission to Yeshua. But that submission then brings you back to the law and obedience. And then it has eternal value also. This is Jake Harper from American Torah. Submit to Yeshua and keep his commandments as he showed us how to do it.